Hey everyone, welcome to another video on the SDF modeling toolkit for Houdini. And today we will be talking about mesh optimization. So this is the model we will be working with. And when you zoom in, after converting the volume to polygons, we can see that there are some uh, artifacts along the edges that where the edges aren't necessarily smooth and not really useful either. Uh, I will show you how to either smooth out those edges uh, to get bit of the artifacts and just to get a really nice and smooth model or to show you how you can sharpen the model get really nice sharp edges to the point where you can use them as seams for UV unwrapping and just overall a nice clean model that's actually usable at least compared to what you started with. So let's hop into Houdini. Uh, one quick note when you're coming to old SDFM projects after updating to a new version, you want to make sure that you update your nodes to the latest version as well. So to be able to see that menu up here where you select that, uh, go over to Assets, Asset Definition Toolbar, and make sure Show Menu Always is selected. And then when you select your node, uh, up here you can see, in this case, uh, 1.23 is uh, the active one, but there's a newer one, 1 1.24. And so you will just want to make sure that everything's up on the latest version, especially if you're running into any problems or th something is not working the way you're expecting it to, make sure that everything's updated here. The first thing that you can always do that will always improve your mesh, I think, is just up the resolution. Even if you have to wait a moment, I think after you're done modeling or kind of like how I have it here, where I have a second assembler uh, below, top one to kind of at a working resolution, the bottom one at like more of an output resolution, um, that can already improve things quite a bit. Let's say you just wanted to smooth things out. You wanted things to be smooth. You didn't really care about sharp corners. You wanted just to get rid of some of the artifacts. The way I've kind of found works pretty well is first we're gonna promote our normals to points from vertexes to points. And what that lets us do is use the attribute blur node on our normals as well, which, which is uh, really helpful. So. If we put the attribute blur node on here and turn it up, we can see that like the mesh is moving, but it doesn't really seem to do much. And that's because the normals aren't updating. Uh, one thing you can do is drop down normal node underneath. You can see that things are softening up and, and maybe that is what you're looking for. Um, I found that it actually works pretty well to not use a normal node, but actually use the existing normals and blur position and normals together. And I found that that can result in a pretty nice smooth result. Again. It really depends what you're looking for, but if you just want things to be smoother, that's the way to go. Uh, you can also try using the volume preserving uh, blur, which kind of like keeps the edges a little more intact, but almost creates a little like hump along the edge. So I don't know if that's something you want or not, but another thing to consider. You can kind of do the same thing with the smooth node as well. And I've yet to decide if one is better than the other. Um, I'm not really sure. I think they do use some different algorithms. The smooth node is definitely slower, but I think that the smooth node does a slightly better job at keeping the edges intact without creating quite as big as a hump. So if you want to just smooth things out, I think that's the way to go. And you could always, if you wanted the edges still to be sharper, you could always just add more resolution and that would kind of bring those like micro bevels further down. Now what about if you want to sharpen those edges, make them nice and crisp? So there's kind of two options. The first one is going to be like the Houdini built-in version of this that's going to work for pretty much anything. And then I'm going to show you the custom solution I've come up with that I think can be really powerful, but also isn't perfect. So let's let's just hop into it. So let's delete these nodes and let's drop down the labs mesh sharpen node. And let's connect that and things are gonna look terrible. So let's drop down a normal node so that we can kind of reset things. And you can see that it's kind of creating like a stylized sharpen effect. And that might be cool if that's something you're going for, maybe for like a stylized medieval like sword or something that could work. But for our case, we don't really want that. So first thing I normally do is just take the step size way down and that kind of helps a little bit. Turn down the iterations and then kind of play with those values to see uh, we can get to something nice. I've also found that setting, setting this curvature type to curvedness uh, can help with some, some issues. And you can already see that we're getting much sharper edges. But the downside though with, with this mesh sharpen node is that it also kind of creates more of these like some artifacting, some of these like kind of stepping in the curves. Uh, you can play with like the curvature exponent and see if you can like improve things there. And that's certainly a way to go. And I think if you zoom out, it, it does the goal of, I think, improving some of the mesh quality. But the w one downside with this mesh sharpen node is that if you look at some of these edges, they kind of have like a slight rounding to it. And I think it kind of creates like a, this softness to the edge. 
definitely sharper than than before, but not really, you know, sharp like you would might expect. And you can kind of see that there's a little bit of like a roundness to the edges in a way. You can what you can also do at this point is you can like try to fuse the edges together to kind of like consolidate them more. Let's drop down another normal node. This yeah, we'll bring that down. So that definitely helps, and I would say that's a sharper edge. You still get some of that artifacting, but I think it's it can be an improvement depending on what you're going for. One thing you can always do in the end is to to use a poly reduce node, and that's just to get rid of unnecessary polygons. Like if I turn on the wire mode, you can you can see that there's tons of geometry here that we probably don't really need. And the poly reduce node is just such a powerful tool. I love it. And we can probably turn this down to like 15% and get rid of a ton of geometry that we don't need without really making too big of an impact. Oh, let's drop down. Gotta use these normal nodes. Yeah, if we crank it too much, we can kind of see some ugly stuff. So maybe we did too much. Let's do 25, 30. Yeah, and uh, in this case, it's 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 not doing the best job of reducing the polygons right here. Yeah, and, and like I said, it's not perfect, but this other solution I'm about to present, I think can work better in, in, at least in this situation. So yeah, let me show you how that works. So we're gonna go back to just our volume mesh. So what we're gonna drop down is the SDFM post sharpen edges node. It's gonna calculate for a moment. And when it's done, you will see that it sharpened up those edges quite nicely without creating as bad of an artifact on the side. And I think I would say it definitely keeps this, the, the shape overall much nicer than, than the lab sharpen tool. So if I go back to the original mesh and then the sharpen node, you can see it does a, a pretty good job. So to quickly explain what this node does under the hood, is it basically finds out where are these like rounded micro edges, and then it kind of like ignores the edge geometry and looks around for surrounding points and kind of compares the what planes there are, and then tries to figure out where that edge is, where they intercede and push the points into that direction. So I have a little setup here that actually shows you how that kind of works. So as you can see the the points around the edges are pushed along this edge that's based on these surrounding surfaces. And then the, what the post process does is actually just go back and clean up those edges and, and make sure they're, they're just single polygons instead of all those points that are pushed together. Some things to note that it's not amazing is whenever there's a sharp edge that flows into a, a smooth edge, uh, you can definitely uh, get some kind of artifacts. Uh, if they're small enough, it might not matter to you, uh, depending on what your goal is in the end. And uh, if you're baking maybe from like a low poly mesh to a high poly mesh, or just your camera is not that close to this object, it might not really matter. But I will show you some ways how you can fix those two. So by default, it just kind of sharpens things up. You have some parameters here you can play with. Some of them are probably a little bit harder to understand. So I think the best thing is to just try and see if some of these help. So like for example, in this case, let's see if we turn down some of these search points if it's going to help some of these edges. And I think it does a little bit. Yeah, it looks, it looks decent, I think. Uh, and then what we have here is this post process. And so if I turn this on, it's going to load for a moment. And basically what it's going to try to do is consolidate all these edges. Right now these points are just kind of pushed together. But it's going to try to consolidate them so that they're actually one single edge so that we can use them for things like UV unwrapping, that kind of stuff. Um, now that can come with some slight decreased quality in some areas. So let's see what we can do with these edges. So uh, first thing that's pretty cool is if you turn on the post-processing, it generates an ID for each continuous face. So if I drop down the color node, select random from attribute, go into primitive mode, and select face ID, you can see that a lot of the faces are now separated. Now it's not perfect, and some of these, I think because of these edges, there's not enough there to like separate the two, but otherwise it did a pretty great job at kind of separating these edges out. Again, there there is gonna be little artifacts and, and I will try to improve this algorithm as I go on. But I think already this is like a pretty nice improvement. And if we drop down a UB flatten node and hope that Houdini doesn't crash because for some reason this is a very crash happy node. Let me see if I can, yeah, let's go here, drop that in. Hope it doesn't crash. Actually, let's X out of this too because we haven't given it any edges yet. All right, luckily it did not crash. It might help to actually give the seam group that we're gonna put in here before you connect it so he doesn't try to like calculate and unfold this mesh. So we're gonna go in here and either you can type it in or, or 
select it if you already connected it, sharp edges. And now we can select the UV flatten node and it's gonna attempt to UV our mesh. And now let's do our UV quick shade. Let's see how it did. And as you can see, it did a pretty decent job at unwrapping this SDF mesh, which is pretty awesome, I think. And so if you're looking at the 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 wire mesh, we're not we're not ever going to get perfect geometry out of an SDF mesh, uh, at least not at this point. But I think what we can do is improve things to where it's actually useful, to where you can actually UV unwrap it, uh, to where maybe it's easier to optimize your mesh, or you know, in many situations you don't need to have a perfect mesh. And, and in those cases, this might be totally fine. And I think just being able to UV unwrap it, to be able to get sharp edges, I think is really helpful, especially when you go into texturing, being able to maybe just fill in these faces on their own it could be a really good thing and can definitely save you a lot of time because if you're trying to unwrap this right here with with no proper edges it's going to be a pain and the edges are going to be ugly and 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 jagged versus this is giving us a nice clean line for the most part yeah we still get you know some some areas that are not perfect uh, and, and little like artifacts like this little triangle here. But other than that, I think it's pretty good and I think a pretty big improvement over what it puts out by itself. Now, let's talk about some ways how we can fix issues. So for example, right here, none of these solutions I would say are perfect, but I think they can be an improvement. And again, it's always a trade-off with this stuff is how good does it need to be for your use case? If you want a perfect mesh, your answer is 99% of the time going to be to retopologize manually. But can we get this to a point where it's usable for what you're trying to do? That's more of the, the kind of problem I want to help solve. So uh, we have two uh, nodes here that I've created. So one of them is called SDF Post Fix Edges. And what this one lets you do is kind of like help rebuild edges on certain areas. So let's say, for example, we wanted to bring this edge right here all the way to this edge. Uh, there's a couple different modes. Uh, the first one is called edges and point. So we can select an edge or multiple edges. In this case, let me just show you multiple edges and then I can show you how it actually works. And then we select the point. And now what it will do is it will kind of like try to rebuild an edge that's coming from the original edge and pointing down to the new point, kind of like con to connect the two. There's also some settings here. You can change the tension. So kind of like how much it like bows. And also at the moment it like it's raying it or like projecting it back onto the original mesh. Um, you can turn that off and then it kind of like floats more, but I found that in most cases using this toggle ray and smooth creates a much better result. Uh, then playing also with the fuse distance here or the resample length of this curve can can help. And so yeah, that's one, one way of, of, of fixing some of these issues. But the next one is fuse points. This one is really just kind of like your normal fuse fuse node where it's just fusing surrounding points to the ones you selected. Uh, can be helpful, can not be helpful depending on your situation. This is probably better for corners than it is for an edge right here. Uh, multiple edges, what this will do is, let's say we want this edge to kind of smoothly flow into that edge. We can select that one here and then maybe let's select this one and it will try to create a smooth transition between the two. We could change this tension here too to kind of like help do that. Uh, and then you can play again with the fuse distance to kind of see what creates the best result as well with the resample, resample length and see what like works best. Again, none of these are perfect and maybe you would wanna do a second edge that flows along the bottom or maybe we can even try a second starting edge right here. And maybe that will result in a better, yeah, that's actually pretty nice so that like kind of lets us like rework this edge flow into a certain direction. Uh, and then the last option here is called Edge Smooth. So this one you can just select, for example, with Shift A, you can select an existing edge and it will try to like straighten it and smooth it. Yeah. So like that might be good if you have like a, some jaggedness in an existing edge. Maybe let's say this one it kind of helps smooth it out. I'm not entirely sure what's happening here. I might have to look into that for a moment and there's probably a bug somewhere. But yeah, that's how that works. The other option there is, is called SDF fix faces. What we can do is let's say, let's find a good spot to show that one. That's just too clean, I guess. So let's say we have, let's say we have an area like here where there's like a weird edge that we want to get rid of. I would make sure to have this button selected, a select visible geometry only, so you don't actually select stuff on the back end. 
And then you can use the paint one for this, it's pretty nice. So let's just select some of the surrounding faces and then we hit enter. And the first thing this kind of does is just kind of removes the face and rebuilds what's underneath. In this case, it didn't really do much. So let's try turning on the rebuild curvature and and that can help smooth out the faces a little bit. So I don't know that this is a huge improvement in this case, but in some cases this can be really helpful. Maybe let's try it over here. Yeah, so in this case, it did a pretty good job at like fixing the jankiness. But yeah, and then we can, this automatically re, re, recalculates the, the, the different IDs. So if you fix some of the, the edge flows, you should get your face IDs and edges back. So maybe here's another example of something we could fix. This is kind of weird looking over here. So let's go back here to the fa face fix option. Let's select these. Uh, one other thing I found is when you use the, the face fix option, sometimes there's like faces that are kind of like overlapping themselves. And so one thing that helps is to hit shift G, which grows the selection and then shift S to shrink it again. And that kind of helps like get any faces that are like in the middle of it that you maybe don't see because they're small. Uh, and so if we hit enter, let it calculate and now go back again to our color, we can see that 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 little area is gone. My goal with those tools is, is just to provide a way to fix those little issues if you want a mesh that's as good as it can be. But I would also say in many situations, don't overthink it. Kind of like find where is the minimum of where this mesh needs to be. And especially if you're just concepting or creating a background piece or or even a piece that's not gonna be super close up to camera, think about does it really need to be that good? So as the last uh, step of the process, after I fixed the issues that bothered me and UV unwrapped everything, I usually drop down a poly reduce node and that will just take the density of the geometry down and make it more optimized. Uh, so like in this case, right now we're looking at 700,000 points and we can probably bring this down to like 10% at least without really any major issues and have a much more efficient mesh. Let's see this bake. And so now we're at like 70,000 points. But if I go to the smooth mesh, let's turn off our UVs here. And we can see that we're really not losing any quality, but gaining a lot of performance and, and having a much lighter mesh. You can always try to crank this even more and see at what point you run into serious issues. So 5% still actually looks pretty decent. I think we're starting to get a little bit of like, it's not quite as smooth anymore, but in many situations that might still not be a problem. It's try to push it to the limit. 1% actually still looks pretty decent. Again, that's really good at kind of keeping those UVs intact. Now we can kind of see that with the normal, some things start to happen. We can try to drop down another normal note afterwards and see if that can clean things up. I think it might actually make things, it does help a little bit. But I mean at 1%, which is 7,000 points, which is pretty amazing. Uh, we're definitely losing some of the detail here, but it kind of depends on how far you want to take it and what your mesh is there for. But the polyreduce node is amazing and the great last step of the process to kind of yeah, get everything more more efficient. So yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully that's helpful. I will update you guys if I make any improvements on the algorithm. But at this point, I felt like it was good enough to share and already an improvement compared to the meshes that you get out of the SDF straight away. Thank you for all the encouragement and please let me know if you have any questions or suggestions.